everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started and hopefully more people will join us. Uh, my name is Kathy Loma and I am a Master Gardener for Washington County and I represent the University of Minnesota Extension. And I am here to share with you a really fun idea that you can do with your kids and your family while we're kind of cooped up in the house right now. I just looked out the window. It keeps on going from sun to snow to sun to snow. That's the climate we live in, but we can still garden. And today you are with me on a special day. It's April 14th. This is National Gardening Day today. So let's do some gardening, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh, some of the gardening that I've been doing in my house so far. Now, this is a tray of vegetables. I have here tomato plants and pepper plants that I'm starting in my basement under something called grow lights. And people who like to garden a lot like I do will start seeds that way and then they'll plant these plants out into a big garden. That's what I do in the summer. I run a really big giving garden. But that's not what we're doing today. These babies would not make it outside very well yet. So what we're going to do instead we're going to make mini greenhouses. A mini greenhouse is something simple with stuff that you probably have laying around your house. Here's an example of a mini greenhouse that I have been growing outside. This one has something called Swiss chard in it. All right. I'm going to show you another example of something I've been growing. Oh, this is a good one. Right here, everybody. I have opened up my mini greenhouse to show you that I am growing radish. And if you go, I pull this to my camera right here. This is what baby radish looks like. Right now we just have the leaves growing. But this has been growing outside since March 27th. Can you believe it? In the snow and everything. Okay. So. Uh, I want to tell you what are some examples of some vegetables that we can grow today. Um, we can grow something called cool season vegetables. And cool season vegetables, I've got a bunch of seed packets listed right here for you. Cool season vegetables can be started early in the spring, like now. And we're not able really to get into our soil yet in our gardens and things yet, but we can start them in these mini milk jugs that we're gonna, we're gonna do. So if I go this way, can you see me? My, my trusty husband is uh, filming me today. Mm. So these are some examples of cool season vegetables that we can grow. We have broccoli, we have radish, carrots, lettuce, kale, peas, cauliflower, Swiss chard, beets, spinach, cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, turnips, onion, and kohlrabi. These are all examples of things that can go into the ground in spring in Minnesota and Wisconsin and can be started early enough right now, like what we're going to do. Okay, come on over back here, and I'm going to show you how we get started making a mini milk jug greenhouse. Okay, first thing we need to do, everybody, is we need to make sure we have some supplies. And so these are the supplies that you're going to need to make mini milk jugs. And by the way, you don't have to write any of this down because we do have a link that will be posted in the comments and you can um, download a little instruction sheet that we've made for you as well. Okay, back to the supplies. So we need to have some kind of a clear jug or container. We need to have some kind of soil, some kind of potting mix. And I have mine here in just a little clear container today. We need seeds. Today I would like to show you how to plant some broccoli, or some radish and some broccoli are a couple of things we're going to try. We also need water, and we need a knife or some kind of a cutting tool. I've got a couple of things to show you today. This is the adult part of the activity. And then we have duct tape to seal our jug shut so that our little critters don't decide to get in and, and dig in the soil for us. And we need a permanent marker, uh, and we need some kind of a plant label. So I will be showing you all these things. Okay, let's get started. Put that back up there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there it is. Okay, first thing, what kind of jug are we going to use? 
Well, this is a pretty standard looking jug. I think this one actually was a water jug. And I went ahead and removed the label. Just because I want to give this jug to have as much sunlight that can penetrate as possible. Some other examples of jugs that you can use are something like juice jugs. So I think this was a cranberry juice. Um, this one had orange juice in it. And then we have smaller milk jugs as well. Those work too. I want to point out this jug though. If you might notice, there's a difference between these jugs here. This one is all white. You don't want to use one that you can't see through. You want to have, be sure they're kind of clear so that the sun is able to penetrate through because we all know seeds need sun, right? So if you have a white jug, all white, you probably want to add that one to your recycling. So I'm going to do that right now. Recycle that one. Get that one out of the way. Okay. You might say, okay, Kathy, my family doesn't drink milk in jugs. I don't have a jug. Here's something else you might have. Voila. How about a deli chicken container? These are really awesome for growing seeds. Okay. That's an example. And another thing you could try if you buy lettuce or spinach, spring greens in this kind of a container, this works too. That's another example. The big thing you have to remember with containers like this is you have to poke holes in the top and the bottom. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with this jug today. Right here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is prepare my jug, okay? So, what do I do first? Well, seeds have to have good airflow and they have to be able to drain off any moisture. So I'm going to poke some holes in the bottom. I've learned the hard way. Do this first. Don't wait to do this to the end. That gets a little messy. Okay, I can use either a knife. I can use a box cutter if I had one. Um, I actually have this little little pokey tool that I like to use to make holes. This was belonged to my grandma and grandpa, so I like to use this when I plant things because they were big gardeners. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to poke carefully. This is an adult job. You're going to poke holes in the bottom of your jug. Oh, how many you say? Well, maybe six, maybe eight. I don't know, whatever you think. Because we want to be able to, get, to be sure the water is going to drain out of our milk jug. Okay, next thing we need to do, now we need a knife. Once again, this is the adult jug. Okay, so I want to make my milk jug, I want to cut it so that I make something called like a hinge. I don't want to cut the top all the way off. I don't want to leave a hinge. So I'm going to take my knife, and I've got a cutting board. I'm going to keep my hand very far away from the knife, and I'm going to slice. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I need to move my soil over a little bit. Can you see this? Got it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to slice around and around and around we go. Oh, about halfway, kind of right below where the handle is. I'm going to go a little further. So I'm going to try not to cut off the top. If you do, it's no big deal. But, okay. So then you have a hinge. You can open it up and close it. Open and close it. Okay? All right. We are ready to plant. By the way, did I happen to mention that there's one part of your jug you don't want to use? You want to get rid of the lid. If you have the lid on the top of this milk jug, well, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to get any water in it from the top when it rains and snows outside. So we're going to get rid of that, okay? So I'm noticing that I, I still have this on my juice container. Recycle this. Okay, you don't need that. All right, now we are set. So now we need a little bit of soil, okay? Well. I don't know about you, but most of my soil is covered right now. I don't want to use my outdoor soil. I want to use a good potting mix. So this is an example of what potting mix is, okay? You can find it at, at any kind of store um, around here that's easy to find. Doesn't matter what brand you use, there's lots of brands. I think I got this at Menards. Uh, this is something called potting mix, and it's nice and loose and airy and easy to work with. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to take your soil and put it into some kind of a smaller container. Just makes it a little bit easier for you to, to work with. And then another trick that I've learned with doing this kind of a project, so you don't get your kitchen all slopped up with water running out the bottom of your milk jugs, is you put a little water in your uh, potting mix first. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in here. And then I'm just going to take some kind of a spoon or a trowel or something and stir it up. And you want to get it to about the consistency so that the soil turns from kind of a light brown color to where it looks kind of black, so you know it's wet. And when you touch it, it squeezes together and holds, but it's not too drippy, okay? So that's, that's kind of the consistency that you want. Then you're going to put that into your milk jug. How far up do you go? Well, you want your plants to have lots of good soil to grow it. So I'm going to fill that almost to the top here. Almost. Okay. And I'll just take my hand. It feels so good to have my hands in the soil right now. Oh, I love it. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. And I'm just, I'm just gently patting it down. I'm not pushing it too hard. I'm just giving it nice and even on top. I think that's pretty good. All right, can you see that? That's what it looks like right now, okay? Okay, next thing. What are we going to plant in there? Well, once again, we're going to plant something that's a cool season vegetable. You may have seed packets laying around your house that you used last year, the year before. That you can use those. That's okay. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find seeds right now because we're home. Um, you can always try ordering seeds online. That works. I've heard that they're, they're, they're kind of getting a little bit low on stock, but here are a couple catalogs that I like. One's called Johnny's, one's uh, Territorial. There's many, many, many seed catalogs out there you could try to order from if you don't want to go out to a store. But um, if you do, seeds are usually everywhere this time of year. Okay, so I think I would love to plant some radish seeds in my first jug. Um, kids love radishes because they grow fast and they're like little treasures under the ground when they grow because there's something you can pull out because they're, they're a kind of a root vegetable. So I'm going to plant some radish in this jug. Okay, how do I know how many to plant? How do I know how deep to put them? This is important. Whenever you are dealing with seeds, you want to read the back of your seed packets, okay? Every seed packet that you get, I don't care who makes them, or what company makes them, they're going to give you some instructions on the back, okay? And that'll help you to know when to plant, how deep to plant, things like that. Okay, so I am going to, I happen to know that radish seeds are planted about a half an inch deep in the soil, okay? So, if you want to poke holes with a pencil, you can do that. Or you can just kind of sprinkle a layer on top and then cover it up with a little more soil. I'm kind of lazy. I like to do it that way. So I'm going to pour some seeds in my hand. And they are little. Can you come up and show everybody how little these seeds are? This is what radish seeds look like. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take these radish seeds now and I am going to sprinkle them all across the top of my milk jug. Try to space them out pretty evenly. Cool thing about this is if they grow too thickly, you can always thin them out. It's no big deal. That's the way I like to do things. Okay, I think that's good. I have seeds planted all throughout my jug. And now I'm going to cover them up with a little bit more soil so that they're kind of buried about a half an inch, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry. Just have fun and just give it a try. The point is don't push them to the bottom of your jug, okay? All right, so a little bit more on top, and then I gotta get my fingers in there, that's the best part. And go ahead and pat it down on top to cover up those seeds. 
You want to create something called seed to soil contact when you're doing this. Okay, so cover them up. Say adios, bye bye seeds. See you soon, because they are going to sprout for you very soon. Okay, there, that's ready. Next thing. Next step. So, if you have a memory like mine, you may say, uh oh, what did I plant in that jug again? So it's really important that you label your plants. So I happen to have these things called plant labels. They're just little plastic pieces that you shove in the soil. If you don't have anything like that, no big deal. You could just take a wooden popsicle stick and write on it, or you could take a straw and make a little piece of tape and uh, uh, like a tape flag and stick it in there. Anything so you know what's inside of your milk jug. So I'm gonna write radish on this one, nice big letters. And as you can imagine, I'm gonna use a permanent marker because these are gonna get wet. We don't want these to wash off. Okay, radish. And I even like to put, put the date of when I plant this. So we said today is April 14th. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do, blow on it, and I'm gonna stick it in my milk jug right to the edge, because then I can see through and remember what's in there. Okay, that's my first way of labeling my milk jug. The second way is I wanna actually write it on the outside of my jug like this. And permanent marker again, radish. Four, 14, April 14th, okay? And so now it's on the outside of my jug too. Sometimes that wears off over time, but usually it stays. Okay, what's our next step? We got a problem. It's a little loosey-goosey, huh? That's probably not a good idea. So we need to find a way to seal this up. So we can put this outside, and then if we have little chipmunks or squirrels or cats or dogs or little, little critters coming around, they can't get inside of it. So this is where you need duct tape, okay? I've got a couple different kinds here. It doesn't matter what color you have, but what I do is I take and I cut my duct tape, oh, that's some strong stuff, into strips that are about six to eight inches long. And then I start at the handle side and I wrap it around where the little crack is to seal it up. Take my second piece, and keep going. Okay, voila, we did it. Seal it up. Now I feel comfortable picking it up, and it's not going to fall apart on me. Okay, we have successfully just made a milk jug greenhouse. Okay, what do we do next? Now we've made it, right? What do we do next? Well, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm not gonna show you this part now because it's snowing outside, but I'm gonna find a place outside of my house. Yeah, you heard me, outside. And I'm gonna try to find the sunniest spot that I have. And I'm gonna nestle that into, um, well, in my house, I put it outside on the southeast side of my house and I've kind of nestled it into some mulch. And I put all my milk jugs that I planted real close together so the wind doesn't blow them over. If you don't have a yard or anything like that to put these out in, that's no big deal. You could put it on a patio or a balcony or anywhere, anywhere you want. And even if you're inside, you can try this in, in a window. That would work too. You just have to be a little more mindful to open this up sooner than if it was outside. Okay, so you're going to put it outside. And then are you going to forget about it? Nope. Not going to forget about it. What you're going to do is you're going to go check on it in maybe a week or two. And you're going to say, hmm, what color is the soil? If it's still nice and kind of black and dark, it's still wet. It's probably good. But if it's got a light brown color to it, you're going to want to get a little water out and you're going to want to water it through the top. Kind of like this. See what I'm doing? because we don't want our seeds to dry out. And after you check the water, you're just gonna leave it alone again. If it snows, it's okay. The snow will get inside and make it nice and moist. 
If it rains, that's okay too. That gets it nice and wet, okay? But then, after a couple of weeks, you probably want to go peek in there again because, like I showed you in the beginning, you're going to find you're going to have some nice green sprouts. And that's, once again, what radish will look like in two weeks. I also have some baby lettuce. Can you come up close and show them what baby lettuce looks like? This is little teeny tiny baby lettuce. Uh, this is little teeny tiny kale. And I'll show you my broccoli. That's what it looks like. So I brought these inside to show you, but what I'm going to do is tape them back up and bring them back outside and let them continue to grow. Mother Nature has a good way of, 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 of letting those seeds know what they're supposed to do when, and they are nice and safe inside these milk jug greenhouses that we've made. Okay, so then what? Once they start growing nice and big, and the weather starts getting warmer in May, you probably want to take your top off of your milk jug, just like I showed you. And if we get a cold snap, you can put it back on again for nighttime to protect your plants. And then maybe towards the end of May, it might be getting really warm. In fact, did you know that inside these milk jugs, it's usually about 10 degrees warmer. So if it's 30 degrees outside, it's math lesson for the day, what's 30 plus 10? It might be 40 degrees inside of your milk jug. If it's 40 degrees outside temperature, what would it be inside your milk jug? Probably about 50 degrees. So, as it starts getting warmer, we don't want to cook our seeds and make them get too hot because they're not going to like that. You want to open this up. Probably you could cut the top off at the end of May and let your plant continue to grow. Okay, then it's up to you. You can continue to enjoy your vegetables in your milk jug or you could transplant those vegetables out to a bigger garden space and let them grow nice and big um, and, and strong in a garden space too. So either way, you get to try it. It's a great experiment for you and your family. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them into the bottom of the screen right now and we can answer anything for you. And once again, we will have a link to a handout with all of these instructions for you, with all of the supplies you need. And with your steps, your one, two, three, four, five, six steps to make your very own milk jug greenhouse. I hope you have fun, plant lots of seeds, eat lots of veggies because we're always trying for five, five fruit and vegetables, as many as you can get. It's a great thing. Good to see everybody. Take care, be safe. Bye-bye.